Welcome to Madison City Channel's Know Your Candidates interviews, co-sponsored by the League of Women Voters of Dane County. I'm your interviewer, Maria Spinozzi, and I would like to introduce Donna Heard Moreland, running for elder from District 7. As we begin, please tell our viewers a bit about how your educational, vocational, and civic experience has prepared you for the position and why you decided to run for elder. Educational, I have a master's degree in business administration. Uh, vocational, I have been in administration uh, most of my career. Um, I'm currently a director of administration, so I have to deal with budgets and um, I do have HR responsibilities, so I have to compromise with people, talk with people, get them to, you know, be open and share. Um, and I think in a position, a city position, um, that's what you'd have to do. You have to collaborate, compromise. Um, from a civic uh, point, I was on three city committees. Uh, it was a few years back. Um, the Affirmative Action Committee, Equal Opportunity Commission, uh, and the Downtown Planning Commission. Um, I have been in Madison for 17 years. I have lived in District 7 for 14 of those 17 years. Um, I love it. I love people. I volunteer. Um, everywhere. <laughs> I, I, I just, I, I tell people that I, I work to make a living, but I serve to have a life. So that's, you know, that's why I'm running. And I think um, I have the qualifications and the personality and the gumption <laughs> to be able to do it successfully. Madison's efforts to address chronic homelessness have appeared to fall short, especially with regard to providing sufficient support systems for a housing first approach. What ideas do you have that might create greater success for projects such as the one on Tree Lane? Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, I, I wouldn't say that we would need to do anything to recreate the will. Other places have done this successfully, so we really need to uh, talk with the experts, see what's the similarities between our community and their community, see what the differences are, and then try to cater it to what our needs are here. The Madison Police Department has been faulted for not having appropriate policies and training around de-escalation and use of force, especially with regard to people of color. What is your perspective on whether any changes are needed in ways Madison Police operate in our community? We need body cams. I know that it's not going to go over well, but we need body cams. At least it does not give us the full picture, but it gives us a perspective. Uh, things don't have to escalate the way they do. Um, I'm not real sure what the issue is with the people of color, but it does seem as if things escalate a lot quicker when you're a person of color than um, people of other races. So I, I think the police need to, one, be more visible in the community when there's not an issue, get to know the community, walk around, um, and you know, befriend the community so that people trust them. They see them as an individual and not a person with this badge on that's you know, the big bad wolf. They just need to be visible. There is a perception that Madison's story is a tale of two cities, one in which people of color are less likely to experience success. What can be done to ensure that Madison is a community in which all people can thrive? Education. Education is the key to everything. Um, our school is struggling now uh, with this achievement gap. Uh, there is no reason that it should be. Uh, sometimes it comes down to expectations, and I think our teachers have to expect more from children of color, and I think they're not doing so. Um, so I think parents need to be uh, very involved with the school district uh, in their child's life, with their education, but they also have to demand that the teachers expect more from their children. What issue have you identified as being of primary concern to the residents of your district, and how would you approach tackling it? Wow, our district is so spread out, and it's really a conglomeration of all the, these homeowner associations. So an issue in one area is probably not an issue in another area. Um, but I did uh, attend a public hearing about a new development that's going on in our district, and the citizens in that area, because I knew nothing about it, uh, brought up concerns of flooding. Didn't hear about any of that. Most of the uh, concerns that I heard about flooding was in the downtown area, in the north area. Um, but flooding, um, accessibility to the school. Right now the school is it's this weird configuration of in and out and uh, it kind of gets bottlenecks, safety for the children crossing the street um, and people don't want their cul-de-sacs to go away. And the developers that are working on this project, um, that's their plan, that's in their plan. 
So people are protesting that. I want to kind of stay on top of that, whether I win or not. I mean, it's still my community and it's still my neighbors. The relationship between the council and the mayor appears at times contentious. Is this a problem? And if so, how would you improve the relationship? It shouldn't have to be contentious. I mean, this is, if we're all pulling for this city, there's no reason for any of that to be contentious. Uh, we have to agree to disagree sometimes. We have to uh, seek first to understand, then to be understood. And at the end of the day, we need to look at each other and say, did we make the best decision for the most of our citizens? What changes, if any, should be made in how the city approaches major projects such as Judge Doyle Square and the public market? Oh boy, <laughs> a, a, lot, a lot of public hearings, a lot of public hearings. Um, I know that, that Beitler out of Chicago is the developer and I know that there's some type of um, dispute, current dispute with the city. Uh, one, I'm not sure why we didn't have a local developer working on that. Um, that's the one thing. I think we have enough um, trades here uh, that we could do that. Um, but I think public hearings, you know, ask people what they want. Don't decide that you know better than the people that will be um, taking advantage of this, um, this development. What council committees do you want to serve on and why? Uh, I don't know them by heart, by name, but one that deals with homelessness. Um, you know, I work downtown on the square and we see a lot of people that are homeless and um, first we have to determine why. We have to get to the root cause of why and we have to deal with the root cause because people just don't become homeless for no reason. There has to be a reason for that. Um, um, <laughs> ask me the question again. I'm sorry. What council committees do you want to serve on and why? Housing, education, and the plan commission. And the plan commission because of the development that's going up in our district. What would you like to say to the viewing audience as we complete this interview? I am a public servant. I have volunteered, as I pointed out, uh, at a lot of nonprofits. Uh, I have experience uh, working on boards. I was the president, 2017-2018 president of the Downtown Rotary Club, which is um, the seventh largest Rotary Club in the world of 34,000 clubs. Uh, that was quite an experience. Um, I have been on the board of our homeowners association, our, our condo association, for probably 10 years. Um, I'm a people person. I'm a person that looks at all perspectives inside, in, inside of a, an issue and um, try to come up with the best resolution, understanding that it's not always going to um, positively affect everyone, but it will be the best decision that can be made with the information and the tools that we have. I want to thank Donna Hurt Moreland for speaking with us and the viewing audience for taking the time to know your candidates. Please vote in this and every election. On behalf of Madison City Channel and the League of Women Voters of Dane County, I thank you for joining us. Yeah.